Thanks for checking out this review video. So this is for Season 2, Episode 3 of the Creep Show series on Shudder. I am doing no spoiler reviews for all these episodes because I'm putting them out before they go up on Shudder. And also, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Also, I'm not allowed to, actually, <laughs> in order to continue to get these. So there'll be no synopses whatsoever. Uh, I have every episode has its own no spoiler review on my channel in a playlist. So you can check that out now. Episode 3 is hitting Thursday, April 15th, so let's get into it. And an overall thing, I know I, I said on the last one for Episode 2 of Season 2 that it was a step down from Episode 1 Season 2. Episode 3 is another step down, unfortunately, in my opinion, from Episode 2. Not a huge one, it's just one of the stories I didn't really enjoy, and one of the other ones I did, actually, I thought it was pretty good, uh, but just... I'm just saying, like, the grouping of these two, it's overall not as good as the second episode and not as good as the first episode. I thought the first episode, obviously, is strongest, really good. But I'll give the good and the bad about these, and like I always say, just check them out yourself, and you get an idea of if you're going to like them or not. The other thing is, I like the aspect with the Creepshow series of you never really know what you're going to get. So just seeing what people are doing, how they're putting the stories together, and it's short. You know, it's real short, and you're not spending a lot of time. So if you see a story that you don't like, you spent, spent what, like 20 minutes watching it? No big deal. Anyway, the first one of episode three is The Right Snuff. Now, this is directed by Joe Lynch, who did such films as Wrong Turn 2, Dead End, which I haven't seen. Chillerama, I also haven't seen. Knights of Bad Astom, also haven't seen, but had interest in. And Mayhem, I did see Mayhem. I've always, I've loved Mayhem even before Joe Bob covered it. Uh, but that is on Shudder right now. Great film. Uh, written by Paul Dini and Stephen Langford. Now, it's interesting because Paul Dini has actually written a lot of scripts for animated Batman shows. So he's got pedigree. I mean, he's been writing. And then Langford uh, actually wrote a bunch of episodes of... A bunch of shows, but Family Matters and Malcolm in the Middle, two great shows that I watched some time ago and would watch reruns of. Uh, anyway, these two worked together on a script for the uh, sh the story Skin Crawlers, which was in season one of Creep Show, and I quite liked that one. This one is a big departure for me story wise. I don't think the story is that good. That's actually my biggest problem with this. I think from a technical standpoint, it is directed quite well. It is acted quite well, too. I really enjoyed the acting. And the acting in it stars uh, Brecken Meyer, who I haven't seen Brecken Meyer in anything in quite some time. So it was awesome to see him. He was in such films as Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, The Craft, uh, Road Trip. People probably know him most from Road Trip. And Robot Chicken. He's lent his voice to that and done a lot with Robot Chicken. Um, but it was good to see him. He was great. Also, uh, Ryan Quantin was really good. People probably know him most from True Blood, but he's also been in the film's Dead Silence, which gets a really bad rap, and I don't think it's as bad as people think it is. We're gonna we're gonna revisit that one, just so people know. And Knights of Bad Astom, which, like I said, I want to check that out. So, like I said, those two individuals, Ryan and Brecken, did a really good job acting-wise. Uh, Joe Lynch did a really good job with the directing. I just don't think the story's really there. Um, and also to, you know, go even further in explaining that the story isn't really there, the it ends up feeling stretched for runtime to kind of hit some sort of runtime to kind of make it a longer story than it actually needs to be for what story is there. I just think it needed to be kind of fleshed out a little bit more. I just don't think it's there. I don't think the script is there, which was disappointing because, like I said, I liked Skin Crawlers. I thought that one was quite good in season one. But it's definitely a different setting. That's one of the things I give it points for. I like the fact that it was a different setting. Uh, I'm not going to say what that is, obviously, because no spoilers. But you haven't seen a story like this for Creepshow. So kudos on doing something different. I like that. And some people may really love how different it is. And they may love the story. I don't know. We'll find out. I just wasn't huge on it. Uh, so for how little time there is for these, the setup is way too long for this and it feels stretched for time, like I was saying, but the good acting does you does keep you engaged enough and the good look of the cinematography 
and the directing keeps you engaged as well. But you just have this feeling that you're kind of waiting in the water, you know, just, just kind of like doggy paddling in the water, just waiting for something to happen. And that's not a good thing, especially when these are as short as they are. Uh, it's not fully straightforward, but enough that it wasn't satis that I wasn't satisfied. I went into the story thinking, oh, I have an, I have an idea of exactly how this is going to go. Now, it ended up going somewhat like I thought it was going to be going, but not 100%. So I appreciate that it wasn't 100% straightforward, but it just didn't feel satisfying. It really didn't. And I think a big part of that was all the time that felt like it was just kind of wasted getting to the end. Um, yeah, there is a pretty clear morality lesson and it ends up getting kind of beaten over your head. I think that's one of the other problems I have with it is that I think the morality lesson in this should have been way more subtle. Uh, there are some ways that it could have been done in a more, um, you know, pulled back type way that more muted that would have kind of meant more, you know, when people come to their own realization on these kind of morality tales it ends up being a little more rewarding for people than when they feel like it's being shouted in their face in a way, because then it just gets kind of annoying. It's like, okay, I hear you. I hear you. I get it. I get it. It just seems like it's too much, in my opinion. Um, ultimately, I put down, ultimately, it's it's pretty boring, unfortunately. Um, also, I was really looking for more effects in it. Like, there there is one particularly big practical effects thing that I was like, Okay, I see that that's where a, a good amount of time went. Oh, and I will say the set design. The set design is good in this one. I really did enjoy the set design. So I spent a lot of my time when I was bored just checking out the set design. That's pretty impressive and cool. But overall, not that great. I'm going to give it an overall 1.5 stars out of 5. I'm sorry. I wanted to like it more. I just didn't. But you can tell me in the comments if you liked it a lot more than me and why. Because I'm open to hearing that. Now, the second one, definitely better than the than the uh, the right snuff, is Sibling Rivalry. Now, this one was directed by Rusty Cundiff, who did films such as Fear of the Fear of a Black Hat, Tales from the Hood, and he did a bunch of episodes of Chappelle's show, so good stuff there. He also did, there's two other Tales from the Hood films that he directed as well, so just know that. Uh, it was written by Melanie Dale, who also did... Twitterings from the Circus of the Dead, which was one of the specials, one of the creep show specials. I enjoyed that one. I thought it was a pretty solid story. And this one has a very similar feel, in my opinion. You can tell the writing style is is the same. So it makes sense when you know that she did that one and she did this one. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. It's got the same type of voice to to the writing. Um, this one stars Molly Ringwald. Uh, that's the the one big name, but there is, I will actually say there's some pretty good acting in this one. Uh, but Molly Ringwald's in it. You'll probably know her, obviously, from 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink, The Breakfast Club. She is actually in some episodes of the Stand miniseries on TV in the 90s. And then also the bigger thing that she's in lately is Riverdale, which I'm going to tell you right now, I watch Riverdale. I think it's a fun show. I know some people be like, oh, that's for like teenagers or like 20-somethings. I don't think so. I think it's pretty fun. I think it's pretty good. I'm a Riverdale fan. Uh, I watch it with my wife, too. She likes it as well. Um, okay, so this particular story has a fun and playful comedic aspect to it. I think that there are times where it gets a little bit slow for how much story is there, but it's filled with good dialogue. It's feel, filled with good comedy. And that's what I think the first story was kind of missing, is they tried to fill it with ex dialogue that was... Not that interesting, and it felt like it was kind of retreading the same thing. If you're going to do something like that, at least make it amusing in some way. And this one does that. Like, it may, be, may have been a situation, it does feel a little bit like they needed to stretch some things a little bit here or there. But they did it in a way that's still engaging for the audience. You get some laughs. You get some fun out of it. And like I said, the comedy feels playful. And I like that comedic sense to it. Um, it also has a quirky lack of focus with the main character that actually kind of works for the subject and how it was constructed. It's weird because if you would take it out of context and how it's kind of like unfocused and it kind of like jumps a little bit, you would be like, that can be annoying. But I feel like it really works within the frame of, uh, within the, the, the setting of the story, especially with who the main character is. It fits the personality of that character. And 
I don't know. It's just like interesting, quirky, in my opinion. And I like that. Um, you can definitely feel them uh, building towards something good. You do this whole time feel like, okay, we're going somewhere. We're building these little pieces. It's like these little crumbs kind of being laid down. Now, ultimately, I did guess what would what would be at play at the very end. I didn't guess exactly how the events are going to go, which is good because I don't want to know everything, you know, telegraphed to me. But I'd say don't think too hard on this one. Don't, like, try to solve it while you're watching it. Just kind of, like, sit back, enjoy the ride because it's short, and you'll... You'll enjoy it. I think it's a pretty solid ending, and even though I did see it coming, I was happy with it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, there is some wonky CGI in this, though. This is a problem for me because Creepshow is very focused and has been very focused on practical effects. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some practical in this, but it's mixed with some CGI, and the CGI looks weird. Um, mm. There's also a moment of ADR in this that sounds weird. Uh, it's very brief, so it's not like a huge deal, but there's a few of these kind of technical weird things that happen that kind of make you step back a little bit and pull you out of the story somewhat. Well, I mean me, maybe not so much to other people, because I, I do have to understand that when I'm watching this, I'm really looking to kind of pick things apart for myself for the purpose of this, so it's a little bit different. People will watch it differently is what I'm trying to get at. Um, solid story, but there is a portion at the end that feels a bit unnatural and forced for the world that was created and for the story that was being told. That said, it doesn't ruin the experience of it at all. It's still overall fun, and I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the concept, and I want more from Melanie Dale. I really do, and I will say that the directing was quite well handled as well, so Rusty Cundiff, I'm gonna check out some more of your stuff. Uh, but anyway, I enjoyed it. Overall, I'm giving it three-star rating. So there you go. So overall, you can tell uh, this is a little bit of a step down from the second episode. Not huge. I really didn't like the right snuff. I just, it didn't hit for me. So I'm really interested to find out if it hit for anyone out, anyone out there. So put some comments down there. And also, what did you think of sibling rivalry? I thought it was fun. I like that approach to a lot of these stories. Like, if you're going to have a story that, has to waste a little bit of time somewhere or you need to make up for the fact that you aren't going to use like huge gore gags or anything like that put in some good comedy melanie dale obviously knows how to put in some good comedy so i enjoy that but uh put some comments down there what did you think uh thank you for checking this out do me that big favor hit the subscribe button because a lot of people watch my videos and they aren't subscribed and if you would subscribe it could help me out a lot and it literally takes you a second cost you no money or anything like that. So I would appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when I'm putting up more reviews like this or one of my really in-depth uh, review videos or an unboxing or a haul videos or opinion pieces or whatever. I'm doing a lot. But I do thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.